Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 17th, August. It's overcast. I'm okay with that. I like overcast. Keeps the heat away for a while, but it does burn off and bring humidity. I'm not a fan of that. So today, it's up in the air. But I'm optimistic, I have a good attitude, and a good mindset. And yesterday, got a chance to take probably 14 individuals, I'm going to guess about 10 of them have never hiked in their life, <coughs> and say <coughs> that we took them up to Mount, Mount Fremont Lookout, which is at sunrise, and we drove up there, everything was great, you know, we walked, we went through the gates, drove up there, you know, it's, it's one of those activities that you can tell they're not very excited, but at the same time, it's like you kind of hope that that light goes off in their head and they're and they're they suddenly excited, like, wow, this is right here in my backyard. I, I would love to do this. And I have to say that the quote of the day goes to one of our participants whom uh, she said that uh, there's a point where I wanted to turn back. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it, but I stuck with it. I finished it, and now I, I did it. I'm proud of myself, and I think that there's so much more that I can do. That is exactly what I love to hear. That's that's the point that doing things like this where you sign up, you have these physical limitations that you place on yourself. It has nothing to do with what reality is or or anything like that. Your physical limitations are pretty much they they exist because you put them on yourself. When and you fail to jump a certain amount of, you know, to try to jump a certain amount of distance, you fail at it, you get another try at it, and you just don't try it. You just give up. That is self-imposed, self-limitation, and it's, honestly, it's it's one of the things that people suffer, for, uh, suffer from a lot. We all have our own self-doubts and things that we've tried maybe once or twice, and we never, ever get back into it. Just for the sake of fear of embarrassment or or, you know, that you don't want to try to do something over and over again and keep failing. But the thing is, like, when you fail, you learn. Anyway, so she started it. She got about, you know, she was probably 65%, 70% done. And she was having a hard time. um, Stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. But she made it. She gets to the top and she says, oh, I'm so proud of myself. And then at the bottom, it's like I was talking on the way home. And I said, um... Did you sort of, we were kind of worried about you. And she said, well, you know, I had uh, I had some sort of doubts, but um, I did it. I got it done. I got to the top. It was a beautiful sight. And I don't believe that there's anything I can't do now. And so, you know, it was, uh, it was one of those moments where it's, uh, you saw that light go off. And to me, as an avid hiker and an outdoorsman, to see that was, was awesome. It was... <sighs> You know, it was one of those things that, um, you know, it's like, I enjoy hiking. I don't need other people to to affirm that or to to recognize that or to, to respect that at all, really. It's just the fact that I enjoy hiking. I enjoy being outdoors. And for me to sort of pass that on or to introduce somebody to it and to get them to see the reasons that I do do it, and that's going up to a view seeing something, challenging yourself, you know, being face to face with your own physical limitations and then meeting and overcoming those. Because the thing is, you're not going to, majority of the time, you're not going to fall short or not be able to complete something. It's it's your mind telling you that, you know, hey man, we've, we've gotten here before, you need to stop. You know, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that your body is capable of so much more. And you just have to shut your mind off and just keep pushing forward. <coughs> and having the fact and, and, or a, a thought in the mind saying that, you know, everyone else has done it but you. You need to get up there. That's sort of a motivator, I guess. And maybe that's what pushed her. But she did it. Proud of her. And she said that, you know, it was something she really enjoyed. And she feels like she can do so much more now. And... I love hearing that just because, you know, it was, I was worried because, you know, what if somebody fell or what if somebody got injured and we had to carry them off or somebody had a, you know, anaphylactic shock, they got stung by a bee, 
you know, any, anything like that. All those things that come into play, you kind of have to think ahead and plan ahead, plan for the worst, if, especially if you're a party leader. You know, and you don't, you only want to take people out that you know are physically able to do it. And I really didn't know who would be all physically able to do anything, um, just because I, I judged them on their, you know, their job performance and their ability to learn. It has nothing to do with their physical ability, but I mean, everybody did it pretty much. Um, we had two, we had one person from the get go stay back, had another person try and going up a little hill just became, you know, just, just, uh, lost confidence and decided to look back and say, okay, I'll, I'll go back and then just slept the whole time. But for the rest of us, everybody made it, you know, it was, um, it was a good day and uh, I even got somebody up there who I didn't think would even go. And so it was good. So Mount, I was trying to say this wrong, Mount Fremont Lookout um, was beautiful. It was a great day. There were some mountain goats that were up there. We, we took the frozen lake, uh, the frozen lake route. And then on the, on, the, on the way down, I decided to take them through Shadow Lake which kind of wraps around the lake and comes back instead of just a straight line. I, I don't like there. I don't like up and backs very much. I like to try to add some, you know, variety to the to the hiking experience. So we did that. I did get some sun. Um, I could definitely feel, you know, a little bit of a slight sting on the back of the head and the shoulders and all that. But I mean, small price to pay for being out on the mountain for an entire day, being in a national park. I love Mount Rainier National Park. Um, and just being able to take it all in and, you know, consider it a day at work was great. So I had to type up a report for that today to kind of see how it goes. I have an idea for our winter, um, all staff thing. I want to take them snowshoeing. You know, it's, a uh, it's another service provided by the Rainier National Park, <coughs> National Park Service. And I want to take them up there and do that and, uh, just get them out there to try some stuff they haven't tried before, but... Yeah, so that was great. The, the hike was great. Um, we did see some, uh, like I said, we saw quite a few mountain goats and uh, a couple billies. Uh, somebody claimed to see a bear bearing, uh, barreling down the hill. Uh, no confirmation, but someone's like, that, that brown thing down there is just booking, you know. And then these were, you know, hunters. And so I had a, a suspicion that it may have been a bear. But um, as long as it was way down there and we were way up there, that was fine with me. Because I've had an encounter with a black bear in the Montana backcountry alone going through a huckleberry field. And it was like, it was probably 10 feet in front of me and scared the crap out of me. But it was, uh, now that I can look back on it, it was, it was cool. Uh, it was a cool situation or just sort of memory to have because for one, I didn't die. And two, um, you don't see that very often. And when you do, it's not that close. It was a really close encounter to the point where I could hear him breathing and then, you know, making noises and huffing off. So it was really cool in that regard. Um, but yeah, so Mount Fremont Lookout, it was a beautiful view up there. It was locked up. Um, there's not much cover on the way up. Uh, no privy, really. Um, so we had a couple people that had to go to the bathroom, but we didn't have any um, any cover for them, and uh, so that was that. Um, but it was uh, it was a great day in the national park, and um, you know we got back in, in ample time. Everything worked out, and everyone everyone's healthy. And I, I don't know if anyone called in sick yet today uh, because they're sore. But you know it was a good you know you need to get out once in a while and challenge yourself physically because. Just doing the same thing over and over again and the monotony of working what we do. It's just, it's nice to get out and actually do something like that and uh, to bond as a team. I think that was, the, that was the thing that I was going for, was the team bonding. And the fact that all of us went, all the managers and supervisors went, was great. And the fact that, you know, it was a good experience for all of us. I think that, you know, we know each other a little bit more uh, because of it and I'm, ha I'm actually happy to go into work today I have to train for a couple hours this morning, but it's going to be good because I'm in a great mood. I just, something about hiking and the outdoors sets me off. It just gets me off and going for the, it feels, I feel really good for the, for the next day or two. 
And I just feel like I just can't get enough of it. I don't know if any anybody else anybody else feels that, but just the getting outdoors and to to being out there and being around it and and feeling so you know you just feel small and a part of a greater thing. And the National Park Service, I love it. I can't tell them how many people I love it, you know. And, and the fact that the tribal members themselves, it says in the manager's handbook for the National Park Service that tribal members need not pay an entry fee. You know, entry fees for families in a car of six, $25. Or if they have an interagency pass, America the Beautiful Pass, that I, I still pay for, that's $80. You know, or, uh, or a specific park pass, which is 50. You know, you get one for Olympic, you can get one for Rainier, Mount Rainier, you can get one for you know, Arches or Zion or any of those other places, but they're specific for that park only, it's 50 bucks. So I get one for all of them because I, I would love to drive down a Crater Lake and camp out for a night or two. You know, so it, uh, it opens up the door for more opportunities, but these guys can get in for free. You know, there's days they wake up in the weekend, their kids are like, we want to do something, and they're like, I don't know what to do. Go hike, go go to the river and just have a picnic, you know, have a bar, you know, do something, get out of the house. But it's it was a great day. I'm glad to introduce people to it. I, I honestly will tell you, I smiled like a dumb goober most of the time. It was cool. Um, I really enjoy introducing people to the outdoors and, and having them actually enjoy it is the ultimate reward. So despite the sunburn and uh, the blisters I think I have on my feet, it was a great day and I'm happy and I'm glad to have been able to share that and introduce that into the lives of so many other people and I hope they remember it for the rest of their life. I'm sure that they will and I know that I will. So that's me wrapping up on Thursday. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.